Hey there guys, if you have ever wanted to build a natural wood perch for your bird but just thought it was too involved or too difficult, in this video I am going to be going over all of the accommodations you need to make for both the wood and the hardware to make sure that what you are building is safe and then I will teach you how to build a natural wood perch for your bird. So if that's something you want to learn to do, you want to stick around because that's going to be coming up right after this. <music> Hey there guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about a natural wood perch, more specifically building a natural wood perch. Uh, now a natural wood perch is going to have a lot of different benefits. One of the main ones being they most closely resemble what your bird or other animal is going to encounter in the wild. Uh, you know, it's very easy. You can get dowel perches, you can get plastic perches that are straight lines that give your animal something to stand on. And they do the job, but they don't do it as well as what your animals are going to be used to. Uh, you can purchase natural wood perches, uh, and by all means, if you don't want to fool around with making one, uh, feel free to go ahead and buy them. But they are one of those things that once you know how to do, they're very, very easy to put together. Uh, and they're very, very inexpensive to put together. So there's a couple of benefits you're going to get from a natural wood perch. So first of all, when you select your section of wood, here I have a piece of sycamore. Uh, it has reasonably straight branches, but I can include forks uh, in the branch. If you're using a natural wood that has uh, curves and bends, you can provide a lot more variety for your bird that way. Uh, now this is also going to get a little bit thicker at each of the nodes where one of these branches was growing off. Um, so that's going to give a little bit of thickness that your bird has to accommodate as they are walking on this perch. So by exercising their feet, having to change how their foot is landing on the perch, you're going to get a lot of different ways uh, to exercise your bird as well. And one of the really cool things I've done with this perch, you'll notice there were these small branches um, they are straight cut, so they're not sharp at all, but they do give me uh, about a half an inch. So I could even take slices of apple, banana, uh, maybe whole grapes, go ahead and stick them on this perch. So this perch then is not only a form of tactile enrichment that your bird has to touch and get around on, uh, but it could be a foraging toy as well. So natural perches really do give you a lot of different options. Now in talking about building a natural perch, there's a couple of different options uh, that we need to talk about. Uh, there's a couple of things that need your attention before you can get into building a perch. So we're going to talk about what allowances you need to make with the wood that you are using for your perch. Then we're going to move on to talking about the hardware that is used for the perch. Uh, and then we'll get into putting the perch together. And if you are intimidated by this, please do not be. Uh, these things are really, really easy to put together. Once you have all of the supplies in hand, you can put a perch like this together in under two minutes. It's really, really easy. Uh, we're actually going to be building this perch in real time on the video so you guys can see just how quickly it comes together. But first things first, we want to talk about uh, the wood that we are using for a natural perch. Uh, now for a natural perch, you want to use the same accommodations that you would for feeding your animal browse as a form of enrichment. Uh, and I actually just did a video on browse as a form of enrichment. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, uh, that's going to be somewhere up there. Um, and I'll also put a link to that video in the description section down below. But just a quick recap, uh, browse is essentially cuttings of edible plants that you can give your animal to interact with. So the accommodations for browse are going to be the same that you want to use for a natural wood perch. So the first thing you want to make sure you consider is whether or not the plant you are using is toxic to the animal you are using it for. Uh, this right here is sycamore. This is going to be safe for most birds. I'm very, very comfortable with this. Um, but the reason I say you want to double check for your particular animal, because different animals are going to have different levels of sensitivity to different things depending on the plant in question. So that's something you want to check with your individual animal in mind. I'm also going to recommend that you specifically check the parts that you are wanting to use. So for this, this piece right here, I'm going to be using the wood, 
Uh, the bark is still on the wood, so those would be parts that I want to check. Now, there are no leaves on this right now, uh, so I don't have to check the toxicity of the leaves. Um, anytime you're using any kind of edible plant or checking to make sure that it is safe for your animals in case they do ingest part of it, you want to make sure you check the wood, the bark, the leaves. Uh, if that plant has fruit, you want to check if the fruit is toxic. You want to check if those seeds are toxic. Um, just because one of those parts is toxic doesn't mean that the rest of it isn't usable, uh, but it's definitely something you want to keep in mind and just be aware of. So always research toxicity of what you are using with your individual animal in mind. Now the next thing you want to look at is, is the branch physically dangerous? Uh, like I said before, I trimmed off these short branches. Uh, they are flush, they are flat. I mean, there is no jagged edge that could cut anything. Um, you want to make sure you avoid any sort of jagged edges, any part of sharp points. Uh, here I have a fork, so the bird will be able to walk either here or on this smaller part. Uh, when you are using forks, you want to make sure that it is not something you're, if your bird gets its foot caught, you don't want that to happen. If you have a lot of small, intricate branches, you want to make sure that it's not something that can get caught in a leg band. Uh, always, whenever you're putting anything new into an enclosure for your animal, uh, as bad as it may sound, I always encourage you to think, what is the worst possible scenario that could possibly happen with this? Because then your goal as an animal caretaker is to do everything in your power to avoid that. So this branch, the, uh, the build of this branch is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Minimal risk in terms of a bird getting caught uh, or injuring itself on the branch itself. So you check the toxicity, you check that it is not physically dangerous, and the final consideration, you want to make sure that this branch comes from somewhere that has not been treated with insecticides or pesticides. You do not want to risk any secondary toxicity from this plant. So if you have this in an area of your garden that you know is safe, uh, you can go ahead and use that. If you have friends who have yards that you know are safe, you can go ahead and use that, uh, depending on how much you trust those friends. Uh, if it's a tree that's just outside, you don't know who's taking care of it, I would always err on the side of caution. If you do not know whether or not that piece of wood has been treated with a pesticide or an insecticide, you want to just go ahead and avoid it. Um, it's not worth the risk to your bird. So those are the accommodations we have to make with the perch. Now with our hardware, uh, we're actually going to use three pieces of hardware in putting together this perch. So the first piece is going to be a hanger bolt. Uh, now, a hanger bolt is a piece of hardware that has a threaded end with a flat end that can accommodate a wing nut on one side, and this end is threaded with a point. That is what will be going into our perch. This is the part that will be sticking out that we can use to attach to the edge of the wire. Now, with a hanger bolt, you want to make sure that you have a corresponding wing nut. Uh, now, this hanger bolt is two inches long, so that's important to know because uh, that'll let us know just about how much is going to be going into the perch. It's going to be a little more than half. So a little bit more than an inch of this hanger bolt is going to be inside this perch. You want to make sure you know the diameter of the hanger bolt because you need to have a wing nut with a corresponding diameter. Both of these are quarter inch pieces. And you also want to make sure that they have a corresponding thread per inch number. So for both of these, it is going to be 20. You can get a hanger bolt and a wing nut that are the same diameter, but not the same number of threads per inch, which means it will not screw on easily. But this, with the corresponding numbers, as long as you line them up correctly, will screw on pretty easily. Now you're also going to need some washers. You're going to need two washers. You want the inner diameter to correspond with your hanger bolt. So the inner diameter of this is a quarter inch. So you can see it slides over that really, really easily, um, but it doesn't leave much of a gap. So it's going to hold on pretty tight. You want your outer diameter to be able to adequately hold on to the wire of your cage. Uh, so these ones right here, these are inch and a quarter outer diameter washers. Uh, that's going to hold on really well to most small to medium sized bird cages. If you are building something for a large macaw, you may need to get uh, a washer with a larger outer diameter, and you may even need to go up to using two washers to sort of span that gap so that you can adequately get on to that wire. Now, all of this hardware, and this is very important, all of this hardware 
needs to be stainless steel. Birds are very, very sensitive to heavy metal toxicity. So if you use something that is zinc or galvanized, you run the risk of uh, poisoning your bird. And I have worked in rescues before. I have seen birds that have succumbed to heavy metal poisoning. It is not something that you guys want to see. It is not something that you guys want to deal with. Uh, just use stainless steel hardware. One thing I will point out, uh, usually when you buy these hardware pieces, none of them come in the same number of units per bag when you buy them, if you go to a local hardware store or anything like that. Uh, the wing nuts I got in a set of two, the hanger bolts came in a set of four, and the washers came in a set of five. Uh, now those little bags can be a little bit flimsy. Uh, what you can do is cut open the top, make sure you tape them shut so they are secured, uh, but what I like to do is I'll usually just put them in a Ziploc bag and make sure they are clearly labeled. You want to make sure that you know the diameter of the pieces that you are using. You want to make sure you know threads per inch if you are using the bag for the hanger bolt or the wing nut. Uh, and always, always, always know whether or not it is stainless steel. If you forgot to label it and you're not sure, treat it as if it is not stainless steel and I would go ahead and avoid it for your bird. Stainless steel hardware is going to be a little bit more expensive. In fact, depending on the piece of hardware you are using, it can be up to uh, one and a half to two times as expensive as a galvanized or zinc counterpart. But it is safe for your bird, and all of this hardware is completely reusable. If your bird completely destroys the perch after you have made it, salvage the hardware, use it again, build another perch. So you don't have to buy this hardware ever again you just need to get new cuttings of a plant. And if you have a tree like this growing in your yard that you know is safe for your bird, is not treated with pesticides or insecticides, you can go out to your yard every time you need a new perch and there is absolutely no cost past your initial investment of this hardware. So that is all that goes into uh, you know, selecting your wood and your hardware to make a natural wood perch. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into exactly how we're going to be putting this together. All right, guys, so we have the wood for our perch. We have the hardware for our perch. Now there's just a couple of other things you're going to need. You are going to need a drill, uh, and I like a drill with a quick release uh, built into it for attaching bits. And you are going to need a corresponding drill bit. You want to make sure to pre-drill the perch before you put in your hanger bolt. Uh, if you just try to drill in the hanger bolt, there is a good chance that the wood could crack and that would, you know, create a lot of difficulties. One, the perch could break a lot easier. Uh, it could leave the pointed part of the hanger bolt sticking through the perch, which could be a potentially damaging thing for your bird. Uh, but even if you just have a crack right there that doesn't have the hanger bolt sticking through, isn't potentially causing the perch to fail quicker than it would, one thing you will have is you'll have a seam right there that is a great place for droppings and other things to get caught. So just go ahead, use a drill bit to pre-drill your hole. Now you wanna make sure that the drill bit you are using is smaller than the hanger bolt. If you use a drill bit that is larger than the hanger bolt, what's gonna happen is there's not gonna be anything for all of these threads on the hanger bolt to catch into. Uh, now on this one, I have actually already pre-drilled this. Uh, believe it or not, I actually did this entire video without realizing that the microphone wasn't on. So rather than try to do a voiceover and remember what I was saying at the time, I just decided to go ahead and redo it. So this perch is already pre-drilled. So the easiest thing to do, you want to go ahead and load your hanger bolt into your drill as if it is a drill bit. Uh, now they do make special bits that are designed for installing hanger bolts, but you're going to need different sizes if you want to do different perches. And for me, that is just one more piece of equipment to keep in on hand. Um, now you want to make sure you load the flat end into the drill bit. Uh, and you want to make sure you give a good amount on the outside that way Oh, and then I just completely loosened it. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to what you are doing with the drill, uh, which is probably going to be a little bit easier for you guys if you are not also doing a video. Uh, now you want to make sure that you leave enough out uh, so that 
All of these threads can go into the wood. You'll notice there's this area here that has no threading at all. I also want as much of that to get into the perch as well because everything that's loaded inside the drill right now is what will be sticking out. I want to make sure that enough of those threads are sticking out so that I can get a very tight connection with our washers and our wing nut. Uh, so now all you're going to do is you're going to take your perch, load it in where you have your pre-drilled hole, and just feed it in. Now with a perch like this, you want to go pretty slow. Because uh, again, you want to avoid the chance of cracking the perch. You also want to avoid possibly doing any damage to those threads. So when you tighten up your drill, you want to make sure to take your time so that you don't potentially damage those threads. But you'll notice now I have a perch that has a hanger bolt just inside of it. Now there is a little bit of this flat area right here, but that should be more than adequate to accommodate the bar spacing. So now all you're going to do, you're going to take one washer, that'll go inside the cage, that's going to go on the inside part of the wire. You would feed this through your wire, you would load this washer on the outside, so those two washers are going to sandwich your wire, and then the wing nut is going to be what holds everything in place. So you'll notice uh, if you went through the bar spacing, the bird would still be able to reach things like the wing nut, they can reach the washers. Uh, depending on how active your bird is, they may even be able to lightly touch that hanger bolt. So you do want to, again, use stainless steel hardware. But as you can see, that went together very, very easily. Um, in fact, I could even tighten that even tighter if I was not doing it one-handed while also trying to keep it in camera. But as you can see, it goes together very, very easily. So that's all that it takes to put together a natural wood perch. All right, guys, now that is really all there is to putting together a natural wood perch. Uh, I do want to remind you guys that since this is a natural wood, and depending on the type of wood you use, it might be a softer wood, these perches will probably not last as long um, and in fact, this sycamore perch is going to be going to a cockatoo, so I can almost guarantee that this perch is not going to last as long. But again, now that you know how to make your own, replacing these perches is a really, really easy thing to do. It's a fun thing to do. Replacing perches can actually be a form of enrichment. If you do it regularly, uh, you give your bird the opportunity to exercise a little bit more, you change the layout of their enclosure, you change what they are able to access easily. Um, so you can change your bird's entire world by just changing the perch that leads up to their food bowl. Uh, if it sets an inch higher or an inch lower, that changes there every single day. So that's a great thing to do. Again, I want to remind you guys, this hardware, save this hardware. If you notice that the perch is starting to go, give out, uh, what you can do is you can go ahead, take this wing nut off, which I actually did tighten all the way when I wasn't on camera. and in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea because that just gives me a lot more that I have to unscrew. But if you notice that the perch is starting to give out or you just want to go ahead and replace it, uh, take the wing nut off. You're going to go ahead, pull your perch out, slide those washers off. And just like we put it in, you're going to take that drill. You're going to slowly tighten it onto this bit. Once you have a good grip on this bit, go ahead and back it out. And then you'll have a hanger bolt that you can use again. And this piece of perching uh, can be tossed out. Uh, it can go into a compost pile if you have one of those. So it's a great way to reuse natural wood, uh, you know, for, for things like that. Um, and, you know, if you're composting it, it's more than likely going to have a little bit of droppings and other things too. So there's all manner of beneficial things that you can get going that route. Um, but of course, you could always just throw the wood out, save the hardware, and build yourself another perch. Um, so it definitely is something that I encourage you guys to do because it is very, very easy. It is very inexpensive. I mean, the total on this hardware that went into this perch is probably in the neighborhood of about 4 to $5 at your local hardware store. And this hardware is reusable. So for 4 to $5 and a tree outside that I know is safe, I can have perches for a bird for a lifetime of that bird. So to me, that's a great thing to know how to do. So I definitely want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, like I said, 
Natural perches like this, they're going to be tied to brows as a form of enrichment. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, I'm going to have some, video some videos in the description section down below that you guys can check out uh, to learn more about that. Uh, now, if you are wanting to make this for your bird, uh, for me, one of the things that I have noticed that for a lot of bird owners, they're a little bit wary of doing things on their own because they're worried about doing things in a way that's not safe. So if you have built a perch like this for your bird, I encourage you guys, go ahead, leave a picture in the comment section down below. That way, other people who watch this video can take a look through the comment section and realize that other people are doing this and it's a really easy thing to do. I do want to thank you guys, for, as always, for watching these videos. If you like this channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what kind of content you guys want to see because I do thoroughly enjoy putting the other videos like this for you guys. Once again, I want to thank you guys so, so much, but I'm going to have to head out because I've got some cages to clean. Uh, so I will see you guys next time. All right, thanks. Bye.